In this lesson, we'll solve a problem that I see as a mind blower, finding the amount of gold in a piece of gold-bearing quartz. Let's begin. The density of gold is 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter. This means that one cubic centimeter of gold has a mass of 19.3 grams. We write this as, where rho is the symbol for density, m for mass, and v for volume. The subscript, AU, is for gold, from its Latin name, aurum. Gold is a dense element more than seven times as dense as quartz, the mineral in which gold often exists. If you have a chunk of pure quartz mineral, you can calculate its density by first measuring its mass on a scale and then dividing by its volume. You can find its volume with the overflow method. Dunk the chunk in a container brimful of water and catch the water that overflows. Measure the volume of the overflow water, which is the same as the volume of the chunk. If you do this accurately, you'll find the density of quartz is 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter. We abbreviate the subscript for quartz to QZ. Now, if you measure a chunk of quartz to have a density greater than 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter, aha, then you know that gold or some other dense substance is mixed with the quartz. Our physics mascot, Sneasley, makes this claim. Quack, quack, quack. Tell me the mass and the volume of a piece of quartz mineral that contains gold, and I'll tell you exactly how much gold is in it. Quack, quack. Do you believe, Sneasley? Is this claim incredible or what? Is it magic? No, it's just some figuring with physics. Let's give it a try. We want to find the mass of gold in a given chunk of quartz, so we focus on our beginning point, mass equals. We know that the mass of gold plus the mass of quartz equals the mass of the chunk, which we label big M. We also know that the volume of the gold plus the volume of the quartz equals the volume of the chunk, which we label big V. What ties mass and volume together? That's density, rho. Let's continue. The mass of gold will be equal to the difference in the mass of the chunk and the mass of the quartz. In expressing the mass of quartz in terms of its density, do you see that the mass of quartz is equal to the density of quartz times its volume? And we know from equation two that the volume of quartz is equal to the volume of the chunk minus the volume of gold, right? And for the volume of gold, can't we substitute its mass divided by its density? Are you following this? Then multiplying the terms in the parentheses by the density of quartz, we have Okay, now I want you to notice something here. We know the mass of the material, m. We know the density of the quartz, rho sub quartz. We know the volume of the material, v. We know the density of gold, rho sub gold. We've got one equation here with only one unknown, which is the mass of the gold, m sub gold. We need only manipulate this equation algebraically to solve for the gold, yum. Now rearrange this so all the symbols for gold's mass are on the left side. And we get... We're getting there. The left side of this equation can be expressed as... And with a bit of algebra... Then continuing, so we see we have
and we have a solution, for we know the numerical values for each symbol and units of measurement check. We see grams in the numerator and the units of densities cancel out, so our mass is in grams. How wonderful! The mass of gold in the chunk can be determined by knowing only the mass and volume of the chunk, plus the densities of gold and quartz, and of course, assuming that no other minerals are present. Although gold is most often found as minuscule particles in soil and rock, isn't this gold and quartz example nevertheless yum-yum physics? I leave you with this question. Consider another chunk of quartz with the same mass, big M, but with a higher percentage of gold in it. Would its volume be slightly smaller, slightly larger, or be exactly the same? Think about that. Until next time, good energy. Mm -hmm.